Hi everybody, my name is Eduardo and I am making my second video today on how I got my pilot's license. If you haven't yet done so, uh, go ahead and check out my first video. Uh, it's on the link down below. Um, basically what I'm going to be going over today is exactly what were the steps that I took to get my pilot's license. And this can uh, be the same steps for anyone else who is not a dreamer or a DACA recipient per se. Anyone else who would, you know grew up here in the US, they're a citizen or a green card holder as well. Um, so anyways, let's get right to it. Um, thanks again for watching my video. So these are the steps to flight training on how to get your pilot's license. So basically, as a student pilot, um, you first have to get a medical certificate. And what this medical certificate allows you to do is basically a doctor signs off saying you are good, you're fit, physically fit to start flying. And so that's the first step. Um, getting a medical certificate can be hard if you have chronic diseases, if you have problems with your eyesight, or if you have uh, uh, different uh, bad things such as color vision, hearing, audiology, uh, near vision or distant vision. Uh, I've met a lot of people who've said, hey, I wear glasses or I wear contacts, can I be a pilot? The answer to that question is yes. You could be a pilot, you could be a commercial airline pilot, as long as you are, um, you pass a first class medical certificate. And so when you go see a medical examiner, um, they'll do all of that, they'll do all the checks, and if you're wearing glasses, you tell them up front, say, hey, I'm wear I wear glasses, um, and you'll have to wear them during your physical exam with them. And so when you do go through that step, um, you'll get something like this, um, something similar, I think. Uh, I went in and got my first class medical certificate because uh, being a pilot in the profession, if you want to do it as a profession, you have to go for your first class medical certificate. And so what your first class medical certificate allows you to do is be a transport airline pilot. And so it looks sort of similar to this. That's a first class medical certificate. And so you'll get signed on. I'm blocking off my information there and down there, but uh, that's similar to what you'll be getting. And so what you do, you put that in the back of your logbook here. And so this is my logbook here, pilot logbook. And so that serves as a good purpose to have it always on you if you're flying. And as a student pilot, you're always gonna have this with you because it holds your endorsements, and I'll get to that down the road with this video, but you basically need to hold on to your logbook because it has all the information in case you're ever ramp checked on the ramp. And basically the FAA will come on the ramp and they'll ask you for your credentials. If you don't have them on you, you get in big trouble or depends on the officer to be, be honest. So uh, before I move on, let's go ahead and go with um, what kind of things would disqualify you to get a first class medical certificate? And so a couple of things that will disqualify you is angina, bipolar diseases, cardiac valve replacement, car, carny heart disease, I'm sorry if I'm saying this wrong, diabetes, uh, epilepsy, heart replacement, myocardial infraction, permanent cardiac pacemaker, uh, personality disorder, uh, psychosis, substance abuse, substance dependence, uh, transient loss of control of nervous system functions. So basically, those are all the things that will disqualify you from getting a medical certificate. And so, as I mentioned, you wanna get your first class medical certificate if you're doing this as a profession. That's right, as a profession, you wanna get your first class medical. That's the first step to anything, I think, if you're gonna be a pilot or if you're wanting to do this for fun, you can go straight to getting a what's called a third class medical certificate. So basically the only difference between a third, a second, and a first medical certificate is the type of business that you're conducting. So if you're in a third class medical certificate, you're most likely a student uh, just starting off or even as a 
person who just bought an airplane and wants to fly for fun, but not as a profession, you'll be getting a third class medical certificate. And I'm a little bit rusty on the times, but I think what uh, a third class medical certificate is good for is three years. I could be wrong. I have to go back and look at the FAR aim book for that. And then the second um, medical certificate is good for, I believe, uh, also a year and a half, but I could be wrong. And a first class medical certificate is good for a year for a first class medical privilege. And when I say privileges, is you know, you're transporting people for compensation. So it's only good for a year, but after a year, if you don't go in and get your exam done again, you will have to uh, either get it renewed, or if you don't wanna get it renewed and you're still a student pilot, you can let it just uh, pretty much um, go, I guess. Like, you know, it's gonna eventually expire, but it's good for five years after your first year. So. Um, the FAR AIM book, I would recommend you go in the FAR AIM book, you go to your medical certificate requirements, and it'll tell you the times. So please do not take my, my, uh, I guess my knowledge on that, because I'm a little bit rusty like I mentioned. But anyways, that's the first step. Let's get to the second step. Uh, so you want to go to a flight school, right? So you want to shop around like you do if you're going to buy a car, you want to go to different places. and you really want to do, you want to invest a lot of time in this subject, to be honest, because it's going to be expensive going through this uh, process to get your pilot's license and it's not cheap. So you definitely want to go to a good school. And when I said to a good school, you definitely want to ask questions about how many instructors are there, uh, you know, cause your availability, you're probably working half the time and then going home and then possibly flying on your days off or something like that as a student, like I was. So you definitely want to ask about the instructor's availability. Once you've done that, uh, you want to ask them about the airplane fleet, how many airplanes they have, and uh, do they carry their own insurance? Do you have to buy your own insurance? And that's a whole separate topic. But uh, you also want to ask the cost, definitely the cost. You want to ask what it costs to operate those airplanes. Are they already in the full price of operating and with fuel, uh, here in aviation terms, we call it uh, rental being wet. You know, you're renting an airplane that already has fuel that you don't have to pay extra for. Um, some flight schools or even clubs will have their own airplanes and they will rent them either wet or dry. Dry meaning that you have to pay your own fuel, but in the, in the other side of it, you also get to rent it for a lot cheaper. It all depends what you have to spend, and honestly, um, I try to save any every penny I can because it's expensive already as it is, and I'm paying this all on my own. I've had a couple people contribute towards my dream of becoming a professional pilot, so every little bit helps. Trust me, you want to get with a good school. So. The third step, um, you definitely want to go through the TSA approval, and this is with uh, anyone who is not either a green card holder or has uh, or was born here, basically in the U.S. Um, so if you're a U.S. citizen or a green card holder, permanent resident, you do not have to go th through this third step. This only applies to Dreamers, uh, DACA recipients like myself. So if you don't know what a DACA recipient or what a Dreamer is, it's a very unique immigration system. Uh, it's a program that I'm in. If you don't know about it, I'll leave a, uh, a link to the, to the video down below. So please go look at that video and then come back to this video and it'll make a lot more sense. So what I had to do with a TSA approval is after I had gotten my first class medical certificate and then had checked out the flight school and I was pretty um, concern, um, convinced that that's what school I was gonna go to, you want to go through a TSA approval. And so what they call this is a security threat assessment, a T, an STA. And so what this does, basically you go to an office, you get your fingerprints done. So it's like, you know, biometrics. And once that is submitted, you pay $130. That's $130 as of today, June 29th, 2020. So it's $130 to submit that application with the fingerprints. And what that does, that goes through a background check with the FBI. 
and it pretty much does a security threat assessment like I mentioned. Once everything comes back approved, if you're, you haven't committed any felonies or you're not a criminal, you shouldn't have to worry about it and it'll come back approved. So once they do the background check and you get approved, you'll get what's called an approval letter. And this approval letter will be given to you via email. So when you submit your application, they'll have you, um, you know, add your email where you want the final approval sent to. And not just you, but also the flight school that you're going to will also be getting a copy of it. So both parties have a, a copy of it. You want to hold on to this approval letter. Trust me, you do, because at the end, when you're finally getting your check ride done, the uh, designated pilot examiner, the DPE, they will ask for it. So you definitely want to hold on to that since you're not a citizen or a green card holder. And one last thing I wanted to mention with that as well, the TSA approval, when you're going through the application process, you want to go to www.flightschoolcandidates.gov. And once again, that's flightschoolcandidates.gov. And so you go on there and hit the link to apply for the application. And you, if you're just now starting off, um, which you probably are, you'll want to request a category three request. Category three, you know, it's pretty much the difference between a category three, a two and a one is how uh, far into your career you are. If you're just starting off, you're in a category three, you're probably flying a small little Cessna um, just starting off. So anyways, I don't want to get too tied up in that. The fourth thing that I had to do, and I would really highly recommend doing this just because it's going to save you a lot of time, headache, and not just you, but your instructor as well. So you definitely want to develop a syllabus. You want to develop a syllabus with your instructor. And what the syllabus does, just like anything else in school you would have done, you write up a plan, basically what how you plan on uh, executing your flight training. Now, one thing I did want to uh, mention with this as well is when you're getting your pilot's license, there's two options that you could go, well, two routes, I would say. Option or route one would be going to a part 141 school. And what this 141 school does, it's um, they already have their syllabus uh, done and the instructors abide and go through the syllabus every single day you're training with them. And it's a lot more of a, I guess they are, how do I put this in better terms? It's more functional. Yeah, it's more functional and they are more precise. They know exactly what you gotta do to get your pilot's license. Now, if you're doing the other option that I was gonna mention, uh, part 61, in part 61, you're basically freelancing um, your instructor on your own and so you're doing your own syllabus, doing it on your own time, your own speed, basically. And that usually helps a lot of students at first anyways, part 61. It doesn't really matter at this point if you're doing part 141 or part 61. The only difference is how the structure and how quick you want to get it done, basically. And part 141, I will tell you this, is a lot more expensive. But you're also flying more state-of-the-art airplanes. So... If you got some money, you got some dough to throw, 141 it would. Anyways, uh, the fifth and final step, the fifth and final step, you definitely wanna keep track of receipts. Um, I mentioned this because there was a couple times that I flew and didn't fly and I got charged. Um, the flight school that I was just going to, they, for some reason they charged me a couple times and I looked back at my logbook and I said, hey, wait a minute, I didn't fly this day. And the hours doesn't, you know, the flight time that you fly, it's based on hops on the airplane. But if, if you're being charged for something and you didn't fly it and you have your logbook to show, you definitely want to bring that up to the customer service reps at that flight school or flight club. So those are the five things that I did. Um, I feel like I left a lot of things out, but that's basically the starter thing of things. Um, that's basically it. I'll summarize this once again. So basically you want to get your medical certificate. Uh, it depends on you what you want to do. Third, second, first medical certificate. Second, you want to find a flight school and an instructor that you're comfortable with. Third, a TSA approval. 
Now with this TSA approval, it will allow you to fly for a whole consecutive year, 365 days. If you don't finish within those 365 days, you have to pay $130 again to start another application process. So, oh, and one last thing with that too. If you do move from flight schools or flight clubs for some reason, uh, your instructor is not the person that you you thought he was or she was, right? You definitely want to move to somewhere else or you find a cheaper place to start training at, or you just move different addresses and you want to fly at a different flight school. Well, guess what? If you've moved to a different flight school, you have to pay another $130 fee for the application for the uh, security threat assessment with TSA every single time. So. You gotta make sure that the flight school that you're convinced that going to is the school that you're gonna finish. And fourth, develop a syllabus with the instructor. And then fifth, keep track of the receipts. And that's basically it. Um, I did get a lot of questions in regards to this video and that's why I made it today. If you did like my video, please give it a thumbs up. It does help the channel. It lets me know that a lot of you are liking what I'm giving. And uh, I just wanted to mention another thing. Um, there's been a couple of dreamers that reached out to me and they've also mentioned that they're also in the aviation field. And a few, a tiny portion of them are actually uh, wanting to get their pilot's license. And what I wanted to say is, you know, I thought I was the only one with being a dreamer and wanting to be a pilot. And it comes to find out, I come to find out that as soon as I made my first video, a bunch of you reached out and said congratulations for all you've done so thank you very much and I also want to say you know to everybody if you're in this field keep on pushing it's a beautiful thing there's a shortage of pilots right now and with COVID going on right now a lot of the airlines are offering um, a lot of their senior pilots at the regionals or even the major airlines to retire early so that number is just gonna blow up even more and there's gonna be such a need for pilots here in the coming years uh, when I say in the coming years, maybe two, five years, we're, the U.S. is going to need a lot of pilots. And it's just not the U.S., it's globally, Asia, you know, South America. Anywhere you go, they're going to need pilots. So anyways, uh, if you want me to make another video on something else, maybe on how much pilots make, uh, starting wages, uh, type of flying you can do with DACA here in the U.S. domestically, or even internationally when you get your uh, green card or even a you know become a citizen in the US which I hope I will um, please just put the messages down below uh, the questions I mean and I'll try my best to answer them thanks again for watching my video give it a thumbs up subscribe if you haven't and I'll catch you again next time